Hey there, folks. I'm Matthew from Connect and Make Money Count. Today, we have some breaking news from the world of finance. The Bank of Canada just made a significant move that will impact the economy and your wallets. Let's dive into it. In today's announcement, the Bank of Canada revealed that it has raised its policy rate by 25 basis points. What does that mean for you? It simply means that borrowing money just got a little bit more expensive. The overnight rate, which affects interest rates across the board, is now at 5%, with the bank rate at 5 and a quarter and the deposit rate at 5%. So if you're planning on taking out a loan or a mortgage, you might want to brace yourself for higher payments. But that's not all. The Bank of Canada is continuing its policy of quantitative tightening. Essentially, this means that they are reducing the amount of money in circulation, which can have an impact on inflation and economic growth. It's a strategy aimed at keeping things in check and ensuring the stability of the financial system. Now let's take a quick look at the global economic landscape. Inflation seems to be easing up a bit thanks to lower energy prices and a decline in goods price inflation. However, there's still some persistent inflationary pressures in the services sector due to robust demand and tight labor markets. Interestingly, economic growth has been stronger than expected, especially in the United States. On the other hand, China's economic growth has been slowing down, with reduced exports and ongoing weaknesses in its property sector. Meanwhile, the euro area is facing some challenges in manufacturing contracts, while the service sector continues to grow. Overall, global financial conditions have tightened and major financial banks are signaling the need for further interest rate increases to tackle inflation. Moving on to Canada, the country's economy has actually been performing better than anticipated. There's been a lot of momentum for demand and consumption growth in the first quarter was surprisingly strong at 5.8%. However, the Bank of Canada expects consumer spending to slow down as interest rates increase. Despite this, there's still evidence of excess demand in the economy, as shown by recent retail trade and other data. The housing market has also seen some pickup with price is under pressure due to lagging supply. In terms of the labor market, there are signs of more available workers, but conditions remain tight. Wage growth has been around 4 to 5%, and the strong population growth from immigration is both adding to the demand and the supply in the economy. Newcomers are helping to ease the shortage of workers while boosting consumer spending and driving up the demand for housing. As the impact of higher interest rates starts to permeate the economy, the Bank of Canada expects economic growth to slow down. They project an average growth of around 1% in the second half of this year and then the first half of next. In 2023, they anticipate real GDP growth of 1.8 and 1.2 in 2024. However, things are expected to pick back up in 2025 with a projected growth of 2.4%. Now let's talk about inflation in Canada. In May, inflation eased to 3.4%, which is a significant drop from its peak of 8.1% last summer. The decrease in inflation has been mainly driven by low energy prices. However, underlying inflation remains more persistent than anticipated. Core inflation rates have been running around three to a quarter to 4% since last September, suggesting ongoing price pressures. Business surveys conducted by the Bank of Canada also indicate that companies are still increasing their prices more frequently than usual. Reedflation. Looking ahead, the Bank of Canada projects that CPI inflation will hover around 3% for the next year, while gradually declining to 2% by mid-2025. Considering all these factors, the Bank of Canada made the decision to increase the policy interest rate to 5%. They believe this move, along with quantitative tightening, will help bring things back to balance and normalize their balance sheet. However, they will closely monitor core inflation dynamics, as well as factors like excess demand, inflation expectations, wage growth, and corporate pricing behavior. Their goal remains steadfast, achieving the 2% inflation target and restoring price stability for Canadians. I was able to connect with the founder of Connect, Marcus. Let's get his thoughts. Well, Matt, they really did it. They did. <sighs> They've increased us another 25 basis points. The prime rate is now 7.2%. I think that um, depending on what angle you're looking at this from, this is, this is from the perspective of the Bank of Canada, within six months, this will have proved to have been very successful at tightening the economy. If you're looking at it from the perspective of the borrower, this will be the straw that broke the camel's back. I think not just because of the interest rate increase itself, but because of what it signaled to the market. I think like depending on what data you were looking at, like for instance, you know, the last episode we were talking about the difference between CPI and PPI, how CPI is the consumer price index and it is more of a lagging indicator of inflation. And PPI is the producer price index and it is more of a leading indicator of inflation. So I think depending on what you're looking at, if you're looking at more of the leading indicators, there's a real strong case to be made for holding rates where they are because 
the monetary restraint we've been adding on to this system is taking effect right now and it continues to take effect, the magnitude of which still hasn't been felt in the market and those leading indicators are showing that it is taking effect, you can make a very clear argument for pausing the rate hikes based on the leading indicators. Some of the lagging indicators like the CPI number and that most recent employment growth number that we saw clearly outline a case for raising interest rates. So I think if you're the Bank of Canada, you're so scared that the market loses confidence in you fighting inflation that if the market is expecting, like it was, that that's the market, the market's expecting interest rates to increase, interest rates have to increase. And if they don't increase then it probably sends a soft on inflation message to the market. And that is no good, right? Like that would have resulted in a hot fall market for real estate, which is the last thing that the Bank of Canada wants to see. There was another announcement yesterday from OSFI that OSFI is going to change the amount of capital required to be held on the books by the big banks for mortgages whose amortizations are now exceeding that 35 year term. That is going to make the banks highly motivated to get those borrowers out of those extended amortizations. That may be the bigger story than the interest rate hike. Because if you think about it, these hikes are having a bit of a muted effect on the Canadian consumer. Why? 25% of all mortgages are now in these extending amortizations. We can speculate right now between the two of us, that 25% represents the most vulnerable, right? Absolutely. The ones, the ones that are kind of on the cusp of making that decision to sell their home, meaning flood the market with supply. So increasing interest rates is slowing the economy down, but the full impact of it isn't really being seen because those who are most vulnerable are being insulated by the Canadian banks. So now OSFI is telling the Canadian banks, you can keep them on your books. They're not saying you can't keep them on their books, but you need to allocate more capital as a reserve, essentially, to hold on to if you want to hold on to those loans on your books. So you better believe those banks are going to be combing through those books, looking to take people off and ex extend their amortizations, right? That those people are going to get letters in the mail saying, in order to normalize your monthly mortgage payment has to increase by 50, 60, 70%. That will create more supply in the market. That will create more pain, unfortunately. I mean, hopefully it gets sopped up, but that, I think that's a really big story, right? These things kind of both came out in lockstep. I think when we look back on it, the impact of that OSFI change is gonna be pretty significant. Thanks for coming in again, Marcus. And that's all the information we have for now, folks. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. Remember to stay tuned for more updates on financial news and analysis. Don't forget to like this video. Subscribe to the channel if it's your first time here and hit that notification bell to never miss an important update. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.